Hello book friends! Today I'm going to be reviewing the novel Bible Indians by Michelle Good. Hello book friends! Welcome back to my channel Tea Critiques, but you can call me Tia. I review books, I review movies, specifically horror and thriller film, so if you like either one of those things, don't, don't forget to subscribe below so that you don't miss any of my future videos. So, today I'm going to be reviewing the novel Five Little Indians by Michelle Good. I'm going to give you guys a brief synopsis and then I'm going to tell you guys why I think this book is a must read. The novel follows the lives of five regimental school survivors, Lucy, Clara, Maisie, Howie, and Kenny. The chapters shift between each of these characters and also jumps backwards and forwards in time and so we get to dig deep into these characters lives and sometimes spanning their entire lifespan. They are all struggling in their own ways as they try to build a life for themselves after experiencing years and years and years of abuse at the residential school which is called the mission. By walking in these characters shoes the readers learn about the atrocities and abuse that was inflicted upon the indigenous people while they were forced to um, attend these residential schools. We get to see how they deal with their trauma and their pain, how they try to forget, how they try to heal, and how they try to survive. There's one line in this book that I believe the entire novel is in conversation with, and um, or at least giving an answer to, and it is spoken from the mouth of a white man who is the boss of one of the characters, and he is speaking to Kenny, and the line is, let me just read it to ya, the line is, what is it with you people? You are your own worst enemy. And sadly, that is pr the perception that many people have, um, the ignorance that many people live in, specifically Canadians, and what they base their opinions on. This belief that the, all of the struggles that Indigenous people are suffering from are their own problem and are, are their own doing, when in reality these communities are trying to heal and survive after years or I should say decades of cultural genocide of white supremacy's power and control and of the continued abuse and trauma from the Canadian government. So in this novel it mainly focuses on residential schools and how they affected um, all of the lives of the indigenous people. What are residential schools? Well if you don't know please google and read up on it yourself <laughs> because it is imperative that we learn these things and we become well versed in the history of Canada. But just to kind of give you guys a brief little summary, residential schools are religious boarding schools that the Canadian government basically forced Indigenous children to attend. So they made it legal to actually kidnap Indigenous children from their homes and force them into these religious boarding schools. In these boarding schools, these children basically experienced cultural genocide in which they were forced to cut their hair, change their name, stop speaking their language and learn to speak English, while also tr being forced to follow the Christian religion. It is a prime example of white supremacy's strategy to divide and conquer, and it was their goal to force Indigenous people to assimilate into Canadian or white Canadian ideals. And this is how they were forcing them to assimilate, by taking their children, separating them from their families, and forcing them to learn English and become white Canadianized. They did not allow these children to have any connection uh, with their families or with the outside world in general so a lot of people did not know what was going on in these schools. Now of course there was a lot of triggering and traumatic experiences in this novel surrounding suicide, uh, mental illness, addiction, molestation, rape, sexual abuse and so just be wary of that when you before you pick up this novel. In an interview Michelle Good said, and I'm paraphrasing here, that she wrote this novel to bring awareness and that's exactly what this novel does. It puts the reader in the shoes of these characters and you can't help but feel even some of their pain and you can't help but emphasize with them and you begin to understand why they make some of the decisions that they make. Therefore, this novel shuts down that misconception or that ignorant belief that they do it to themselves or that they are their own worst enemies when the reality is they were kidnapped from their homes, forced into these rigorous religious schools, um, abused, raped, and forced to give up their culture and their language, and then, you know, 
you also watched some of their friends die in these schools and then they were thrust back into an unforgiving and cruel world that didn't want them and they had no guidance and they were just expected to adapt. So through each of these characters you get to see how they do that, how they try to adapt, how they try to build a life, how they try to heal and resist and build a life for themselves. The characters um, remain connected to each other throughout their lives and they basically find strength and community in their shared experiences and their shared trauma and their shared pain. Although this novel is full of tragedy and pain and trauma, it is also full of love and community and healing. And this novel made me cry multiple times, of course at some of the most tragic scenes, but also at the scenes of healing because I found the the passages of healing were just so like riveting and powerful and visceral that I was deeply deeply affected and it brought me to tears. The novel explores humanity in all of its complexities and just to provide a little context I will be I guess you can call it a little spoiler but I'm just gonna talk about one of the characters briefly just to give you an example of what I mean by that statement. So for example, Kenny, he is a fighter from the beginning. He is constantly trying to escape. He helps other students um, when they're in their most vulnerable states. And he also helps one of the other uh, survivors escape. And so he has this reputation and he becomes like this legend in the school halls. This is a reputation that follows him throughout his life, but Michelle Good is not trying to make him a superhero, you know? Although he is a helper and a fighter, he does spend the rest of his life running. He spends the rest of his life running from responsibility, from love, from family, and because he just doesn't know how to deal with his trauma. And he also becomes addicted to alcohol. But despite his addiction, and despite the fact that he may not be the best father and husband, he never stops supporting his family. No matter how far he is, he's always sending them money and supporting them. And so he shows love in the only way he knows how, and so even though he might have his faults, he is still trying, and I think that's important. The point is, is that he's human, and that comes with a lot of complexities and layers. He is not perfect, but you understand why he makes the decisions that he makes, and ultimately, as a reader, all you really hope is that he finds peace. And so there's five characters, and like I said, you explore all of their, their lives, their accomplishments, their failures, as they struggle to adapt and survive a cruel world and I think this book is just very 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 educational important it's enlightening and every single Canadian should read this novel even if you're not Canadian but because it is based in Canada I think it is very important for Canadians to read this novel you will learn a lot about the Canadian government and how it brutalized and controlled the lives of the indigenous you will learn the history of, you know, you'll learn more about the history of this toxic relationship between the Canadian government and the Indigenous people and their land. And I think that you will become more aware and educated and you'll be able to emphasize and understand. Now for my rating, I give this novel a 5 out of 5. I honestly love this novel and I have nothing negative to say about it. The characterization of each of the characters are strong and introspective. The stories and the journeys were deep and reflective. Even though we're following many different characters throughout decades of their lives, I never felt lost or confused, so everything just flowed really well. I learned a lot from this novel, and I was emotionally invested in this novel. I laugh, I cried, I celebrated, and I cheered with them when, you know, they reached goals <laughs> and they reached success. It is truly a phenomenal novel and I recommend it to everyone. Alright friends, that's it for today. If you have any questions or opinions about the novel, please comment below and don't forget to subscribe. Alright, until next time, bye.